Every idea, every story starts with a spark, a tiny light that glows. But to speak up, to be heard, to innovate takes courage. We're here to ignite that tiny spark. We're here to foster Canadian voices, our narratives, our ideas. We're here to spark courage. Our logo is a showcase for our culture, our storytellers, our innovators, and it reflects our creators and communities. The spark is a catalyst to push boundaries, to drive the future, and for Canadian voices to be heard on a global stage. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first ever, ever Vancouver International Black Film Festival created by the Fabienne Cola Foundation. This festival will run entirely online and takes place from December 9th to 12th of this year. And so you can grab your all access pass by visit, visiting www.vancouverblackfilmfest.com. And I also want to welcome you to this panel, but before I do that, I want to first begin by acknowledging that this event takes place on the ancestral, unceded, and un unoccupied territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil people. We recognize that the relationship with these lands is ancient, primary, and enduring, and we recognize the immense labor that has gone into cultivating, nurturing, and protecting these lands. As uninvited settlers in what is colonially known as Vancouver, British Columbia, we recognize that we are on stolen land. With that, we honor and support Indigenous resistance and reconciliation as allies in the continued fight for Indigenous sovereignty. So again, I would love to welcome you to the panel today. My name is Ruth Unebu, and I'm a registered clinical counselor here in the Lower Mainland of British Columbia, and I am the host for today's panel. And I'm so excited to connect with you, connect you with these four guests that I have today. So the topic of the of the panel today is the imposter in the room. And I have, like I said, four amazing people joining me on the panel to talk about what it's like for black creatives in the film and television industry in Vancouver. So without further ado, what I'm going to do is turn it over to each individual to introduce themselves. And so I would love for you to know who you are, what you do, how long you've been in the industry. And actually, I'd love to know were you raised in Vancouver or did you move here? Um, and so I will start with whoever's first on my list, which is Lillian. So welcome, Lillian. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, thank you for having me here. It's lovely. Uh, to meet you all. Um, so my name is Lillian Mello. I am born and raised in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. I moved to Vancouver last year um, to actually pursue my dream of working in the film industry. And I've been working in both SEDAC department and our department. I've done some works as production designer, set designer, set decorator. And before I moved here, I also worked uh, in Brazil in one of the biggest, uh, I think it's the biggest a TV channel in South America, and I was a set set decorator, sorry, set designer assistant by the translation. Like it works so differently, the departments that I have to like <laughs> look which one works the best. So like, oh, let's say it's set designer assistant, but basically what I did there was what a set designer does here, uh, and plus other other roles. Yeah, so that's how long I have been here uh, in Vancouver, one year working the film. And in Brazil, I worked since 2011. That's when I started my career in film. Awesome. Well, welcome to Canada as well. Thank you. <laughs> in Brazil, I would love to go there, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Nice to have you. Uh, the next person we have up is Sia. Welcome, Sia. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yes, yeah, so my name is Sia, and I'm originally from Sierra Leone, West Africa. And uh, li but lived in Edmonton as well too. I uh, actress and voiceover artist. I um, moved to Vancouver in 2017, and I was living in Los Angeles prior to that. Mm -hmm. So after school, my career really started in 2014, right? So yeah, so from 2014 until now, I had a little bit of a hiatus because I gave birth to a human being. <laughs> Awesome. Wow, welcome. Thank you. And so you said you're an actress, right? Yes, I'm an actress yeah. and a voiceover actress. And voiceover. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Good to see you. Uh, Simone, you're up next. 
Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so my name is Simone Blay. Um, I live here in Victoria, actually. So don't live in Vancouver, but very close. Um, and I've been living here since 2014. So a few years now. Um, and I was born and raised in Toronto. Um, so yeah, big metropolitan city to like a bit more of a smaller island vibe. Um, but I've definitely uh, spent time in Vancouver and um, I would say I'm like a very new emerging filmmaker. I've only um, directed and produced one film, which was Dance Like Everybody's Watching. Um, and that focuses on uh, the experience of experiences of Black dancers here in Victoria. Um, and so, yeah, super excited to be here. Um, and uh, yeah, excited to just learn from all of you. Thank you. And last but not least, we have Adele. Welcome, Adele. Hi. Um <clears throat> I'm Adela Rowe. Um, I was raised in Vancouver. I've been here since I was four years old. I grew up in Burnaby, um, but I've been moving around a lot, living on the East Coast, uh, Montreal especially. Um, I've been in the industry as talent actually since maybe 20, since I was 12 years old, 11. I started commercials and, and modeling really young, at, between 12 and 14. Um, and I didn't really start emerging into production and like directing and producing until like 2019. So I'm technically still an emerging artist, but I just started my own production company and stuff this year. So really pursuing it. Yeah, <laughs> black owned, yay. Um, <laughs> um, and yeah, so when I was the last question, yeah, I get not from, I was not born here. I am originally South Sudanese, East Africa, but I spent most of my life in Burnaby, BC. <laughs> That's beautiful. First of all, I just, I'm so excited to see so many black faces <laughs> on one screen. And like, you know, there are yeah. not a lot of us here in Vancouver or, you know, even in on Victoria, I'm not even sure about that. So it's just really, really cool just to see the representation of all of us from different places. So I'm excited to just, uh, you know, talk about this topic of being the imposter in the room. And when I was given this, uh, the talk about the imposter, there could be two kind of avenues that we can kind of look at this. And so one of the avenues is just, you know, being the imposter because we're underrepresented within Vancouver, right? So going into the industry as Black women, um, feeling like different because not a lot of people look like us, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. That's one avenue. The other avenue would be like imposter syndrome that everybody does have, right? You know, that feeling of like, I'm actually really good at my job. I know they hired me. I know I've done it before, but kind of having that aspect as well on top of being black women. So I just wanted to kind of, you know, open up the question to anybody who wants to ask uh, answer this question. What has your experience been as a black person in this industry? Um, and have you always been underrepresented in the room? So this is open to anybody who wants to kind of jump out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, so I know I said I'm an actress, but I also do stand-in work. And, oh dear God, I can't believe I'm gonna say this. But here we are, I'm just gonna say it. Like, I go to work and I work on a set and I look around and I'm like, wow. One black, no, two black people, because I'm standing in for an actress. And every day, day in, day out, it's like, hi, John, hi, Bob, hi, Michael. Like, it's just like, there's, whiteness everywhere and it's not a negative way but it's just there's something about having other people that look like you like something about connecting in that way that is so special and is needed in a work environment because you're spending out i'm not on here for one two hours i am here like i spend more time with you than you probably do with your partners at home and i know that for a fact like you know what i mean so it's just like it's that feeling of just like, oh, I'm going back to my school days where I was like the only black person. And now with BLM that happened, oh my gosh, everyone wants to ask you what you think, all black people in the world, you as to this, because apparently all us black people are the same. And we have that. And we, the person that's there is the one who speaks for all of us. Yeah. So it's, it's just something of like, when I get casted on a show that's all black or, you know, working on a show that has black, it's like, black people, we're here. <laughs> it's just like, 
it's yeah it's something i feel like it's honestly scientific where it's like your body something it, there's something with it that it does because it, it's just yeah that's all i can say right now i just got too excited about this. <laughs> i love how you said it's scientific though because i you know we it's the same as if we just see a black person walking across the street, we're like, hey, hey, I'm over here, right? So, you know, being hired on a set with a lot of black people, even like two or three is kind of like, okay. I need to settle down a little bit, yeah. Like I'm in Victoria right now for a play and literally when I walk and see a black person, I, I will cross the street and I'll just be like, oh, hi. <laughs> Come find me. Come I'm, find always, me. I'm always in the streets. Come find me. <laughs> How about every, anyone else? Anybody kind of want to, yeah, add to this, Lillian? Yeah, I can. I can add. Yeah, like I have the experience both here and in Brazil. And um, even though Brazil is like uh, maybe more than half is black or mixed, you are still usually the only black person in the room mm -hmm. or, you know, so I had this experience there and I didn't know the name as imposter, mm -hmm. but when I moved here, I also like the productions that I worked, um, I was usually the only black person uh, in my department for sure. But I, like when I walk in the, in, the, in the office, they're the only black person. And it feels weird because not only you don't see other person that look like you, as Sia mentioned, but I also carry all the baggage of my own country. So like my own country, unfortunately, black people, usually they are working in uh, entry levels or sub work, what we call their sub work. You hear like it's different, the conception of work jobs, because you can do a job because you're good at it, not because that's the only option for you. And it's different there. Like for black people that usually, they are from um, a very poor uh, 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 um, like um, class and they don't have access to a lot of education and all. They end up doing works that are like cleaning, construction, that in there is, is, is or carrying weight, things like here, like set dresser. You would look at only black people basically or mixed people. And those jobs wasn't, uh, they were in job that people will look and respect. And that's another thing. Where job like, oh, you're here to obey my orders. So what I noticed there, and I brought this here, and I'm trying to kind of un 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 undress of that concept was people would look at me back there and expect me to be from the cleaning group for somewhere, but not from the art department. You know, uh, not to expect to be a person that is thinking and creating the spaces. Um, and I was just invisible, you know, and in here is, is, is I am trying to bring the, uh, like trying to take this off because here is kind of a clean, it's late, you know, like you're starting over, but it's still when you get in the room, it's just like, if I messed up, I'm the only black person here. If mm -hmm. I said, I heard someone saying that if I messed up, I'm representing an entire race. They can say, that's why I don't, don't hire a black person. That's why, you know, so it's a lot. I don't know how to explain that, but I always felt this way when I got into spaces, um, especially work, when I don't have like many black people or doing the same type of job as me, that is as I'm representing an entire race. And if I messed up something, they look at me, see, that's why. You don't hire, you know? So, yeah, I don't know. It's it, like it's a new concept for me, the Zinc poster syn like, um, syndrome. The, 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 it's just like finally putting a name on something that I have ever felt. Oh, you know? yeah. Wow. Thank you. Um, yeah, go ahead, Adele. I kind of feel the same thing, too. Um, I've been producing my own projects for the last three years. It's been the same project, but just building up on it. And I always have people ask me, so who's your producer? Or who should I talk to? Or, you know, looking for the person that's supposed to do business with them. And I'm like, me, <laughs> what do you mean? Like, there's nobody else. You're looking at her, you know? Um, and a lot of the times, like I just finished a film summit for playback and I was just in all these rooms and I am like the only, not only am I a woman, but I'm also black and not only just black, but African black, like dark, dark black. Mm -hmm. So you just, I just like stand out in a room 
um, automatically. And so I've noticed a lot of people look at me and they become super ageist as well. Like, oh, what a young lady, welcome young lady, like this, 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 and trying to, you know, belittle you in some in some instances or look for the person who's in charge and things like that and it makes you question yourself too like wait what do you mean like am I supposed to have like you know somebody else you know doing it and then it makes you question yourself okay okay so who's in charge now um so I remember when I first started I had to just pretend that I had a producer that wasn't me and I would just be like no I'll let them I'm just gonna check in and let them know and so like as I was hiring people, I was like, okay, like I'll let my producer, like it was just so awkward, you know? Um, and so I, I think that people don't expect you to be in position where you're actually in control and where you're running the production and you, you have the company and things like that. Um, and that your age is not really gonna define whether or not you can do a job, like, mm -hmm. and, and things like that. So I, I felt that people don't take me seriously sometimes in certain rooms, which sometimes works in my favor. Um, but it's still challenging um, to continuously have to say like, why do I need, do I, do I don't need a plus one or why do I need a guardian for mm -hmm. to approve of, of, of this conversation, you know, um, you deal with me. Um, so that's a challenging thing for me. Thank you. And Simone, do you have the, yeah, what is it like for you? Yeah, I mean, wow, I'm like learning a lot. So I've never, um, like worked on somebody else's production just because I've only done the one film and it was um, a story hive funded film. And so they give you a lot of agency in terms of like uh, being the project lead, being like the director and producer, just like realistic, realistically within the budget, you're going to end up have like having a lot of different hats on. Um, and so the one uh, film that I did direct and produce, um, there was like a lot of um, yeah, just a lot of agency on my part. And um, I guess I'm lucky in that way, um, <laughs> where I, didn't, I, I feel like um, a little bit insulated from some of the things that go on in the industry in general, just on the grander scale of, um, yeah, like the issues that a lot of you have touched on of like, just systemic racism in the workplace and things like that. Um, it was really beautiful to be able to like, create my own workplace and to create my own work culture. Um, and so, yeah, I can only say I'm, I'm really lucky in that way, but also like, yeah, I haven't been in the industry to know. So it's really unfortunate to hear that it's that bad or that challenging, you know? Um, I, sorry, go ahead, yeah. Oh, no, I just wanted to say it's not that bad. <laughs> those, those things are negative like things, it's not bad. It's just they don't know better, you know? It's not a negative experience that you're facing these things because people are always, ex they have that expectation. So it's not, mm -hmm. it's not a negative experience. It's just, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah it is. I think like definitely, it's also a reason why like when I was hiring um, a production company, like I wanted to find a, like a black owned company or just like a company that was like people of color. Um, and I couldn't really find like, especially like locally on the island, it was really hard to find um, a production company with like the size and like the time and everything like that. Um, and so that was a challenge in a way. Um, and I think I'm not totally sure, but there might be more options in Vancouver just because of the population size. Um, but yeah, I, I think I'll probably talk more about like just what that um, that process of, you know, production and everything was like a little bit more, um, afterwards, but I'll start with that. Well, I love hearing that you haven't experienced it as much as, you know, some of the other panel members, like, uh, and I love just looking towards that future of creating spaces that are by us for us and just surrounded by us. So I love that. Um, talking when Adele, you know, you said it's not that bad. I wonder if we are just we just have to accept it, right? Like, because we're black women, because we are underrepresented, because we're young, uh, and because we're women, do we feel that it's not that bad because we've just had to do this, this our whole lives and kind of just accept this treatment? I wonder if, if you recognize that or? 
Yeah, I think it's it's so it's really interesting. I think that with every movement that happens, a change uh, starts. Mm-hmm. Like if we go back to like the Me Too movement when that started. All of a sudden, you had union. You had everyone getting on board, being like, "Yes, we are making systemic." Like, there's changes that are happening because like people were being dropped off left, right, and center, right? Mm-hmm. And then you go, and when I say people, I mean like white strip men who had power and you know you're in the uh the, the the blm movement where that really brought a light and focus in everything in every company now from theater to tv production to anything they're now like getting their people to take classes to learn about this right and i know um one thing that happened with vancouver was um we had issue the, the issue with hair i got really fed up i was like this is bull crap there's no reason why you can't like you have to have people who know how to do my hair on set Mm -hmm. period anyways made a big fuss about it now the union is now doing this thing i actually whatnot they're now doing this thing where the head like head of the finance for hair are now um getting classes together you know getting training together and having that so i feel like when the egg breaks is when we realize as people that's like, oh, okay, you know, there's this person who's been working on a website. There's actually a website that's out that's free where you can find producers that are of color, where you can find um, actors and set decorators and everything. And you can put your information up for free and you can find that. So it's like, there are, we, we have always had these programs and whatnot. They just never got light that was shot like shone upon them so now that this has happened now people are like there are access to people of like black people Mm -hmm. we just have to give the light to them you know what i mean Mm -hmm. but i don't think it's ever and ever anything that we should have to settle for be like yeah that's just the way it is because if we do that then we're giving them power and it's like no that's no it's like we we're going to change this and everyone is going to have a different tactic of how mm-hmm. they do that. You know, like Adele, the way you do it with being a producer is going to be different than Lily and how you do it with being a, a, you know, in your department and Simona, how you do it when you're doing your projects and what comes out. It's very, it's, it's very different. But at the end of the day, we're all going to the same goal, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I totally agree with you on that. I also say that I don't think it's about like, like being like, Taking it, you know, but it's about understanding that you have to go places where you're celebrated, you know. Um, in order to do that, you have to sometimes you have to create those spaces for yourself, you know. Um, like I, when I incorporated my production company this year, I did it with the intention of, you know, creating a space where my friends and I can make things, you know, and not have and be able to be connected to um, our projects and be able to do project you know so a lot of us do a lot of afrofuturism you know and one of my really great friends said something that afrofuturism means that you can project into the future blackness without any chains you know just you can freely project and see yourself into the future you know and so when i hear those types of things from like you know my my like other creative friends it motivates me to say you know like we're, we all have certain gifts and skills and skill sets that we can bring forward as creatives as black women um and I think that one thing that we have different is we have this community-based approach, right? Where we say like, I wanna like, I wanna be a part of the healing in my community. I wanna give a voice to my community. You're focusing on up that uplifting sort of like sense versus on the, in the other way, in the Western perspective, it's really like singular thought where it's myself, <laughs> me and my future, you know? And so I think that what changes when we come into a room is that we are like, no, 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 we're bringing everyone with us and we're gonna, occupy this space whether you like it or not um and i just always tell people like with my lot of my creators i'm just like right now it's a really awkward time for all of us right you're it's, you're uncomfortable because i'm black and i'm here i'm uncomfortable because i'm the only black person in this room but at the end of the day we have to learn how to coexist so like let's just like let's realize that we're we, we want to make things we're gonna have to collaborate and this is the industry that we're in so um i think that I continuously just go with this mantra of I'm going to go where I'm celebrated. And if I'm not accepted in a place, I'm going to create that space for myself um, because I'm not going to stop making things just because you don't want me to, you know? Um, And so that's the attitude that I carry with me. (laughs) That 
fire. <laughs> I know. I'm like, oh, okay, girl. Like, no, yeah, 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 like, like you know, be professional. But yes, that's amazing. <laughs> send a voice note with us. I can listen to it every morning. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, exactly. Or that send it to me. I'll give you a number. That are gonna go like, no, that's that's absolutely beautiful, and that's something that I find the line where you have the confidence of like, I'm taking my space because I own this space. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you're uncomfortable, I'm here to shine. And the moment that becomes, um, I forgot the name, the word in English, but it becomes too much when like, you're just like, oh yeah. Uh, um, what is the word? Jesus, I forgot. Like, if I um, like, like stuck up or something or your head's too big or something or? Uh, yeah, like you are just being like, Thinking mm -hmm. you're the last, or you have a, a saying in Brazil that say like you think they're your last cookie in the pack in the yes. package. Like mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. I'm here. So that's kind of what I carry because unfortunately, what I see is especially us being women when you we tend to put up our attitude and our confidence in and I say like yeah, I'm here to shine. Some people say like, mm. you know. You are being too much. So yeah. it's weird. I don't know. Like, I don't know if that's just me that feels that, but it is, yeah, it is a final balance between finding your space, taking up space, owning the space, and at the same time, not letting people get into you, saying, not try, not let people trying to not let you shine yeah. by these kind of sexism, racism, kind of, you know, like kind of all those things. I don't know how to express better. No, <laughs> I think you expressed it. Really. It's like the vocabulary. <laughs> yeah. Well done. I think it's, what you're saying is like, you know, you want to go in with that confidence of just being a person specifically, yeah. like a black, strong woman. And then society tells us like, if you know that you're good and you sit in your truth, sometimes you're like, oh, but you're like you said, you're too much. Oh, you have a yeah. big deal. As opposed to like, no, I, I know I'm good. It's nothing to do with being, you know, uh, egotistical or anything, but it's just sitting in that truth and being like, I, I'm good at what I do. And so there's yeah. that tug of war wanting to show up like, I'm good, but then what is everybody else going to think about me? Yeah. And it's so interesting that you say that, Ruth, because I find that like straight white men, it's going to sound like I hate straight white men, but I don't. <laughs> they have that permission. Absolutely. And that's what I said, right? Like we sometimes feel like we, all, we, we can take whatever other people give us just because that's the box that they put in. That they yeah. Put in, right? No, it's so funny, Sia, because you just said, like, I'm, I'm going to sound that I just hate white and straight men, but it's like, it's the way they take space. It's in the way yeah. it's so, so entitled that I see us, not only us, like, as Black, but I see other people, like, people of color also, like, reducing their, like, their space in order not to take much space of the white uh, uh, mm -hmm. community and it's funny like you you were saying and I was reminding something like one production that I worked at in Victoria actually uh, and I was there like I always wear my hair like this and like I love my hair I do all the crazy things with my hair and I know this person meant no harm at all but this guy this white guy just passed by me and I was giving him some instructions. I in, was in a position not to be his boss, but I was giving him some instructions, mm. you know, like what well, to be done and all. He was very kind and sweet and all. And here I am like saying all good things about him. So just to make what he did last were <laughs> horrifying. <laughs> you know, like, no, that's probably there's a name for this. Like, no, you hear like saying, I, I can hear my, my, my therapist mm -hmm. in my head. like, you see, no, don't do that. You are just creating, giving like good adjective to a person. But anyways, like he was very, a nice person, a nice professional and all, but I was giving instructions after all, after some time, I'm watching something, I don't know what's happening. And he passed by me and he does like this. It's so soft. Backhand. <laughs> and like, and I, at the time, like, haha. <laughs> I left, but then I was like, mm -hmm. I don't see doing that with any white woman here. Like, oh, look at here. He's so soft. No. But me, he does. Yeah. Like, is that somehow, like, back, going back to taking up our space, is that somehow we are not allowed 
-hmm. And when you're trying to take up her space, they find a way to take that back from you. But you who know? says we need so, permission, though? Who, we don't need any permission to take no, up No, we space. don't need. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, that's the thing. We don't need any permission. But I think, I don't know. I just feel that when we are doing, like, automatically, I don't need permission. I'm here taking up the space. Yeah. It says they find a way to kind of shake your confidence, shake you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're confident. Oh, that's so love. Let me be pet to you. It's like, yeah. what? I'm not a dog. Right. Come on. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just. I think with what you're saying too, like Lily and Adele, both of that, of it, it comes, and I hate, this is my mom's side. I'm like, it comes from childhood. Like I know for me as an immigrant coming here, my mom was like, put your head down. This is how you will success and succeed. You are in a white man's country. We've left yeah. that place. And it was always, that was in my head. Like, put your, but I have too much of a mouth to mm -hmm. like, you know, <laughs> like it was like, yes, mama. And I'd turn around and be like, uh-uh, no, 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 you're not gonna mess with me today. But yeah. like a lot mm -hmm. of people, like a lot of, yeah, it, it, it's, it's in our culture of like, you know, like don't show too much, they, they, you, like you can't handle that, you know? So if we're teaching our children that and they're seen, not even teaching that, but they're seeing us be like that. Mm -hmm. They're seeing, I have a big thing with my son seeing me, mom's taking up space. And also reminding him that, like, you as a man are going to have, hopefully not in your days, but now in this world we live in as a man, you, like, people still see you here. So know that if another woman's taking up space, give her that, like, you know, let, let her take up space too. But it's teaching our young girls and teaching, like, that, like, just being like, you can take mm -hmm. up space, the same space as Rosie, as Paula, mm -hmm. as whoever, you have yeah. that. And once they have that growing up, when they are young, like when they're young teenagers, then they're, they're gonna, they're, it's, to them, it's gonna be a foreign language. Like, mm -hmm. what? I can't take up space? That's, 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 that's a F word that you're saying, you know? Mm -hmm. But I find that, yeah, especially as, as, like, I can't speak on all black women. I know for me, being West African, Sierra Leone is very much so like that, of like, yeah. like, mm -hmm, you know? And yeah, it's like, a submission. Yeah. My mom was like, <laughs> We're South Sudanese, and um, in our culture, there was like a huge genocide against like the Black Africans, and you know. So when we came to Canada, my mom was the really fiery person. She would go to the school, and she says, "You know how expensive this is. You know, you can't buy this color anywhere, sir. So don't mess with my kids." Like, uh, <laughs> you know. And so, like growing up with a mom that was just like she was always fought for us, and she always said, "You know, are you trying to be like?" You know, she she used to say this to us, like, you know, if they're going to be racist to you, I'm going to grow out of all the moms and we're going to city hall. We're going to make some noise. So no one's messing with my kids. And she always says, defend yourself and I'm going to come back and I'm going to protect you, you know. And that was so important in my growth, you know, like growing up as like probably like the in an immigrant community and things like that. And and I think that that voice that she instilled in me it still shines in these rooms where every time I, I get a little awkward, I just see my mom go like, you know how expensive your skin is, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> just, and I'm like yes, mother, like, you know? And so it, it's so true. Like, I think that it's important that as like black women and as you become mothers or whatever, and, or whatever how you, you use your voice in the world, you know, to, to, to give that voice and that confidence and to say that like, you know, anything is possible. And my mom always says like, you know, do you, how, what kind of color do you bleed? You know, do they bleed red? Do they do they have to breathe? Do they have to use the bathroom because if they poop, they can they also stink. So you know, just all the you know. Yes. Yeah, I also I think it's really interesting the way that like all of you are sort of pointing out like the conversation around like the conversation around thing like the folks that we're talking about even as we're telling these actually super traumatic and like. Uh, harassment stories of like people yeah. touching like, our bodies and like you know what I mean um, and I think like it's really interesting because like the conversation around taking up space is really a conversation that like a lot of like minoritized people tend to have but like for like white cishet men like it's not called taking up space it's just being like that's just life like yeah. that there's no yeah. like it then like they, it, they don't, there's not a conversation right around that it's just like living and then we're having this conversation around it on how how can we find ways to feel that confidence um and so like yeah I think that's really interesting and I was also just like drawing some parallels as well to 
um, some of the things that I struggled with when creating my um, film, which was about um, Black dancers in the city of Victoria. And it also um, spoke to cultural appropriation in dance, in Black dance specifically. So we have um, quite a big uh, hip hop um, dance community here and West African, and it's like, like vastly predominantly white, um, if not sometimes only white. And so we really delved into like, what does that mean? And what does that look like for black folks wanting to learn these dances? And what does that look like in terms of black folks wanting to access these spaces, but then not feeling like they belong or like the title, you know, like feeling like an imposter in a space that like is actually yours. Um, and I found that when I was trying to craft the narrative, I was encountering so many of the same things that we're talking about today around like trying to apologize and like code what you're saying, even though when you know what you're saying is true, you you know how you feel about it. No. But even as we're telling these stories, we're like, okay, but I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But in yeah. reality, all we're doing is telling things as they are. Yeah. Like we're exposing yeah. the truth and we're not creating like even when um and I really relate to you Lillian when and uh Sia when you're talking about like oh white men and then you're like okay but I don't want to make it sound like I don't and it's like mm -hmm. well it's just a descriptor though yes right so why do we feel bad for just like yeah. naming what's happening yeah. or when somebody's touching our hair like when we feel the need to preface oh no but we're, they're really nice but it's like why do we feel the need to preface that when like we're we're just explaining a fact right so um yeah I really relate to everything that's been said and I think like I definitely experienced that when um producing my film particularly I literally want to go like this when you did point that out right because like I like I was trying to allude to before the fact is that we are like we sometimes have to climb uphill to just be on the same part right and and that feeling of you know, having to fight through different things like tapping, touching the hair and having to pretend you have a, uh, a another producer. That's not what white people, specifically white men have to have to do to actually serve to, to be just normal. And right. So I love the I love the idea that we're we're going to make space. But it's just the fact that we have to put so much effort to actually make space as opposed to just be right and that's the thing right and that in and of itself is the definition of imposter right we're going in yeah. and trying to like grab gather all our strength to be to create space as opposed to the white person who just leaves their house and they, they're just you know creating that space so yeah that existence is so simple right like you could just spring up um but i find it super challenging I, I don't know why I, had, I, I kind of asked my I kind of have this question where I ask myself I'm like why is it so challenging to exist as a black woman like you have to continuously apologize or you know make someone feel a little bit more comfortable or come down a little bit or try to be too intimidating not to be too loud like it's always a, like a, a balancing act in a sense you know but why you know there why is there so many rules and I, it's something that I kind of a, a kind of the question that I ask myself when I feel like the imposter in the room because sometimes I ask and I look and I'm like wait someone asked me something oh who's and, and I have to make the decision and I have to think to myself oh wait well yeah me you know um it, it it's so challenging but at the end of the day I think that a lot of the work that I do is around intergenerational trauma and about an identity and so the part the my first film actually was about um how finding out that my mom had experience like war and she was a soldier in the army so just kind of exploring her past and how that sort of affects me and my identity and also growing up black immigrant in Canada with this pre-existing PTSD you know um and so sort of like you know sharing my story with the world and kind of getting them to understand that you know when we come into these spaces there is a backdrop that we carry with us, you know, our experiences and the places that we come from. Not only are we existing within the Western sense of blackness, but there's also a history that we carry with us that's not involved in this world, you know? And so I feel like in the Canadian context, it's a lot of like, you know, I, I actually touch upon this in my film too, but there's a, a sort of erasure that happens to your identity and this new, did a new one that you take on. And then that kind of sorts of builds that imposter where you're like, wait, no, like, but I'm this, but I'm African, but I'm from here, but I'm from there, but these are my family. This is where I'm come from. This is where things I experience. But also, I mean, I'm over here now. Um, 
and again, here we go with this balancing act, you know? Yeah. Um, and and it, it, like exactly what you're saying, it's so, it's so interesting because I find that one thing we've, uh, as humans, we're complex. We can meet, yeah. we can be in many different boxes, right? Yeah. And I find that what tends to happen is just like, for some reason, people see you like, we are five beautiful black women here but we're all from different parts. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I find that there's been this whole thing of like black and that's been made popular, not popular, but that's been known by like the American history, by what American black is, that now all of a sudden it's like, my imposter, like the, the imposter syndrome I feel is it's like, I have to be this black woman that has been shown by what America shows. So now it's like, uh, and now I've erased myself as a black African, West African specifically woman, which is completely different than a black American woman's experience, than a black Brazilian woman's experience, than a black British person whose parents came there in like the 40s or 50s and they've like, you know, intergeneration, they're British, but they're black, right? And I think there's this thing of like, it's easier to just label one. And now we feel, and that's that suffering that we feel where it's like, okay, now I'm gonna be this black woman that you've seen that's been popularized by what culture is. And I'm gonna take on all those biases. And the minute I say I'm from here, it's like a whole different, it's like I spoke to a different language to you. Like, yeah, I'm from West Africa. Oh my God, what? What is that? And it's like, Are you uh, from Nigeria or Ghana? Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's, yeah, like, yeah. It's, like, it's like, that's it. The Africa's two countries. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it's like, um, okay. Like, or even Brazil. I can only imagine what people would think when you say I'm mm -hmm. Brazilian. And it's like, oh, what? You're not this? You know? And it's just like, I'm, I'm so sorry. What were you learning in school? Mm -hmm. like, you know what I, I can mean? speak to that as well. That's something that I found like through um, filming with my documentary and like I was using just the word like black throughout like most of the wording, like the pitch, everything like that was something that I'm very comfortable with. Um, and like my dad's um, from Trinidad, Afro-Caribbean. And so like, are you Trini also? No, I love Trinis. So oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Um, <laughs> and so I grew up in Toronto, and so like, ev like black is just very like people just say black. I didn't, I, I never even really thought of it as like maybe some black people don't identify or like what I'm perceiving as black don't identify that way. Mm -hmm. But um, I asked one of the um, dancers in the interview. I was like, okay, so as a black woman in Victoria, and she was like, well, to start, I don't identify as black. I'm not black. She's like, I'm Nigerian. My the, the color of my skin tone is not black. That's not something that I identify as. And where I come from, like everybody is like, you're Nigerian. And our, the understanding of like color is different here. And like that blew my mind because I was like, right. Okay, sorry. Let me like pack my assumptions up, leave them at the door and like rephrase that question. Um, but I think in, in terms of Sia, what you're saying around like all of our experiences being so different, but mainstream society's understanding of black women coming from like MTV and like, you know, Netflix and just like popular uh, media portrayals, which can be quite narrow. Um, we can almost sometimes uh, like internalize that as well a little bit and like find ways that we can fit into those boxes so that we're a little bit more digestible or um, make assumptions about other black um, women as well. So that's something that I had to learn along the way where I was like, okay, mm -hmm. I've like internalized um, a lot of these perceptions also. Yeah, like identity is fluid, at least that's what I always say is that, you know, even amongst, like I had this project me and my friend working on, it's called Hyphenated Africans. And it looks at how, when we come and take up a space, we become hyphenated. When Africa, when you leave Africa, you come to Canada, you become an African American, an African Canadian, African whatever. Why is there a hyphen? Why can't we just be Africans that exist in another world, in another country, you know? Um, and it's just really interesting just to see how, um, if, I don't know if you guys have read Francois Dubois, but he talks about double consciousness. 
you know, and how as black people, we have a double consciousness is mm -hmm. one is the way the world perceives us. And one is the way that we perceive ourselves in relation to that. And so we have this split paradox inside of ourselves, not only just as it being black, but even other people, like I have a niece who's half like Czech and half South Sudanese, who's going to also go through this duality as well. But um, people don't understand just the diversity within the African diaspora and then the African diaspora that exists outside the diaspora, you know, exactly. and that there's, there's, there's like levels to this, you know, and black is so, it's such a, it's not even a word that's def like that can give a proper definition, you know, because black just is like obsidian and darkness and blackness, and da -da -da, but there is so much more. And within the, even right now on this panel, you can see the diversity within the diaspora and there's only five of us. Like, can you imagine if you actually got an opportunity to see us all, mm -hmm. you know? And so I think it's so important that we, that people understand that black and woman and identity is a continuously fluid thing and that there's no one size fits all. There is like this really amazing poet, her name is Kai Davis. And she says that, you know, um, beauty is not painted in a gray scale, but it takes all shades to be able to create a beautiful picture or something like that, you know, and that, and, she, and that is what she, and, and that her relationship to, to black women, you know, that's her her poem. So um, yeah, that's my take. Sia, didn't she say she had to like record a, something on her phone and then just send it to us so we could just hear her voice all the time <laughs> and all her wisdom? Is that what we just talked about? Listen, I was actually secretly, I was like, <laughs> And I was like, so I was looking, you saw me look, I was like, okay, if I just press the scene. Let <laughs> me just press record. <laughs> so, oh, the Dallasms. <laughs> Beautiful. So um, just to kind of not even switch gears, but just talking about, yeah, I, I'm hearing like all of us have experienced some type of imposter syndrome or imposter stance within the room. What is something that you have, found or discovered that you can combat it or help to heal it or help to kind of navigate through that, if anything? I think for me, it's still a journey, you know, like, mm. I, 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 I don't know when <laughs> this is going to stop. Yeah. But I think for me, it has a lot to do with finally seeing, finally seeing and accepting who I am not only as a human, but also as a black person, as a Brazilian, um, uh, accepting my ancestrality, accepting my history, you know, because coming from where I am, I don't know um, um, what about your backgrounds, but you were taught to um, ignore your blackness because being black is bad. You know, being black means you're poor, being black, like all the assumptions, being black means that you're pure, poor, you're not, uh, you're not went to school, you're probably working uh, sub jobs, you know, and you're not going to be successful. So I'm trying to heal all these ancestral, ancestral wounds in order to finally see me and say, okay, I can take up space. I don't care. I don't care white, black, brown, whatever color you are. I'm here to take a space. I'm here to shine. You deal with that. If you have a problem with me, that's your problem. That's not mine. So being able to say that without saying, I'm sorry, you know? <laughs> so that's, that's I, I think for me is mostly understanding and accepting myself. It's, I don't know. I don't know um, um, how is that going to work exactly, but I just feel that is the that is my my answer for this question. And I felt chills when you said that, right? Just being able to sit in your truth and who you are, that core self, and just saying, "I'm me." That's it. I love yeah. that. What does that feel even in your body when you think about that? Like it feels the... weird. Like it feels like my stomach is just like, "Oh my god, I'm going for a walk." <laughs> Do I have to say sorry right now? So, because it's like, um, like, like Sia told about her mom, like, uh, like you don't raise your hand, you just like keep looking down. Like I was, my mom is white, my dad is black, and I was raised mostly with my white family. So all the time I was the darkest one with the toughest hair, you know, and uh, I was bullied in school and all because I was, I was never victim of racism direct 
like, oh, you black or whatever. But I was always a victim of structural racism. So because nobody on TV was like me, um, my hair was bad. You know, I, you know, like that wasn't nice. I was elected the ugliest girl in the school because my nose is different. All, all my features is what in TV says, you're, you're a slave, you're a maid, you're a criminal. So that is the thing that I'm trying to take because there's no kidding. Like you go to a store here, I go like, okay, I better buy something because if I got into the store and don't buy, people may think I'm just came here to buy some, to rob something. Like, come on, girl, you never robbed anything. <laughs> Why are you worried? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but maybe they will think, right? So we better buy this. I don't even need this. <laughs> so it's, it's so within us is just like and it's funny because it's nothing that i is something that i never like experienced but he says i'm finally seeing all the wounds my ancestors had like coming up within me you know my father never told me you don't look up because you're black no i was never pointing out a home for being black my father on the contrary my father always treated me uh, and my sister as part of a human. We are human. You just have different color. You're human. But at the same time, I never had I never connected with my blackness, with my black side. No, because that was bad, yeah. right? The black side of the family, the big family was poor. The black, you know, like living in a community that you go is dangerous. You know, like you almost have to whisper. So it is a lot yes you know and it's just like unpacking one and then you pull a, a lot of together it's like oh my oh, god i wasn't hoping for that but i yeah. just hope that once i start to heal and accepting mm -hmm. myself for being who i am for being a black woman that chose to come to canada and is going to deal with whatever comes and someday is going to shine and win the oscars <laughs> I have to do all those. <laughs> we will pay for that for you. You're going to yeah. get it. You're going to yes. get it. I don't know what Adele's mom says. This yes. is expensive. It's expensive. It's expensive. It's expensive. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. You pay for so many sessions to get close. Absolutely. Right? And we get it for free. Free 99. <laughs> you know? Uh, anybody else? Anybody else uh, find ways to kind of combat or heal or kind of like push away this feeling of imposter syndrome and just being in your core self within the room? I am. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just I just have a quick quick one, but I was just going to say coalition building like like you know, the way that we feel about ourselves is never in a vacuum and we can never get there all the way without people around us being like, yes, yes, you're the shit. Yes, you're awesome. This is like, and also being able to see your struggle and your experiences reflected in other people. So for me, like finding other folks in the industry um, and or when in whatever, like, area I find myself, whether it's university or wherever, um, being able to um, find those other people who are like-minded, who have similar experiences. And chances are in a lot of spaces as well, there's already work being done that we can just piggyback onto because there's there's been so much work around, um, around justice happening in so many different industries. So um, just tapping into that building community, building coalition has really helped, especially in cities like um, Vancouver and Victoria, where the the numbers of us are not super great. So the communities can tend to be quite strong for that reason. I have a personal one. Yeah. Um, I do these, I, this is like a practice that I do with little girls in my family is um, where you look yourself in the mirror and you just boast and you say, who is that? I just want to ask who gave you permission to slay today. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just those constant I am statements, you know, like when I'm with everyone with the little, my little, I have like seven little girls under me, you know, so we have these conversation where we do I am statements, you know, and I ask them, who are you? Not out, not who are you as my cousin or as you're connected to the family, but who are you as like, who do you want to be? Like, let's project, let's project into the future. And those I am statements have really helped me in my, in my journey when I used to question like who I was or who I wanted to become. And instead of asking, who am I? I just try to say, I am, yeah. you know? 
um, and just to find myself in, in as many spaces as I can be in and to know that like, even as a creative and even as an artist, like I'm manic and I have all these different ways that I want to express myself and I'm crazy and, and all that, whatever, but I still, I am, you know? Um, and that's sort of like, even the problem, like my first documentary was called, Who Am I? You know? And it was about trying to figure out my identity and who I wanted, who I was or who I wanted to become or the stories that I carry with me. Um, and I found that the best way for me to answer that question is just to define myself and just say, I am. Um, and that's how I've learned to take up space. Aww. And see, right. how about you? Uh, for me, it's, okay, it's really, inter it's, re it's interesting and weird, but um, I try to go through the day How do I word this? So, okay, I have to say it in my language in my head, and then it comes out as English. <laughs> like, say, it your, say it in your language even now, and then yeah. translate it. We're okay. I just forgot to the day where I did help somebody understand me mm. better. So mm -hmm. basically, yeah, okay. So basically, what it is is I like going through the day. I like to do one thing a day where I talk to somebody, or someone talks to me, and we have. Sorry, I don't know what happened with my computer. You guys just disappeared. Oh, there you are. Yeah, we see you. <laughs> And uh, there's a connection or not or something that's been discussed about about me, mm -hmm. yeah. It, it, like you know, as a thing, oh, I don't know how to say it, but it's it's every day. It's not educating, but informing, mm -hmm. and you know, correcting, and like mm -hmm. you know what I mean. So I uh, like today at our the the show I'm working on to play. I brought my West African food. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because it's like this is what West African food is like. And let's like, so it's like conversations and just yeah, listening, hearing, and then, you know, talking to someone and being like, just a little food for thought kind of thing, right? So I do that on every single set I'm on. If, you know, someone's like, I don't get why black people let it out. I'm like, mm, well, let's, let's just like talk about that, you know? And if I hear a conversation that I'm not a part of, I literally have done, I always do this. I'll pull the person aside privately and be like, listen, you were talking pretty loudly about this. So I feel like I can talk to you about it. Mm -hmm. And so it's something that's really helped me being like, okay, you know, I can't solve everything, but what I can do is every day going by, I can plant a seed mm -hmm. because that's all you need. You just plant that seed and you don't know what happens after it's up to them to ignore it. But it's hard to do that in this world right now because things are hitting us. We're still in a, I don't like to call it a pandemic. I said panorama, pandemonium. <laughs> we're, <still, laughs> so we're still sitting here and listening and hearing we're forced to, right? So that's what's really helped me in the past couple of years of, uh, of going through that. Also, every single morning, I give myself a high five. Yes. Yes. <laughs> everyone. <laughs> Uh, we have about three minutes, so I just want to go kind of a, another kind of round table. What would you um, say to somebody, a young black person, young black woman that wants to get into this industry? What is like one piece of advice that you would give them? I would say, remember that you are enough. Mm. This one is more of a joke, but um, I just say you're going to be black for the rest of your life. So, you know, the, you know, the, the, the sooner you make your peace with it. The, the brighter your future is going to be. It's going to be a lot easier when you just realize for the rest of your life, yeah. forever, until you exist, you're going to be Black, right? <laughs> There's no escaping it. So let's just move on and let's just live as human beings. Um, so. I love that. Um, I would say get ready for the hard work and get ready for the roller coaster. But at the end of the day, every single moment, live in it mm -hmm. and don't regret anything because once you achieve because you will achieve what you've come here for when you keep at it once you achieve it all these things that you've gone through are what's pushing you to get there and in order for you to enjoy this moment it's for you to sit back and see that every other times you've actually enjoyed the whole thing because that is the only way you're not going to suffer depression mm -hmm. because you have to always appreciate and find that. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say. And Miss Simone, what about you? Any words of advice? Yeah, I think I would say like jump right in and maybe like know the difference between um, being like unnecessarily self-critical and like be, be and like reflecting in order to grow. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and like just kind of try and find that balance. But overall, just like 
go for it. You'll make mistakes. That's inevitable. So just do it and you'll figure it out along the way. Well, I'm so excited that I got to meet all of you today. Like, how cool was this conversation? Like, oh, Amazing. just seeing Black people. I mean, we're all accepting the word Black right now, right? But yes. like, just seeing all <laughs> Black people, all Black women. I have not met you. Well, one day, hopefully, we'll be able to do that. But just, I want to thank you so much for your sharing today. It was, it touched my heart. I had chills just hearing every uh, one of your stories about just, you know, being in this industry. Uh, and I'm so excited to see everything that's happening in the future for you guys. Um, yeah, is there anywhere we can, again, real quick, anywhere we can find you online, starting with Lillian, tell us kind of your website. Do you have anywhere that we can find you? I don't have a website yet, but you can find me. My email is lillianmello.art at gmail.com. And I'm also on Instagram at lily with a Y dot mello. Okay, beautiful. Thank you. Adele, where can we find you? You can just, if you look up my name, Adela Rope, you can find all my tags, my website, um, Twitter, Instagram, everything is the same handle. But my Instagram is Adizia, A D E E Z I A underscore Adele. Um, so either Adela Rope or Adizia are the two names you can find me online. Awesome. Thank you. Simone, where can we find you? You can find all of my work at simone blade.com. Yeah. Right? Yeah. How about you, Ms. Sia? How about you? I don't have a website, but Sia Forio, just type that in. You'll find me on Instagram, Facebook, everything. I feel like with Instagram, if you just type the name in, it'll mm -hmm. pop up with, yeah. So you'll see me there, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you again for being on this panel. Like I said, this was just a joy for me just to be in space with all of you. And I look forward to seeing everything that comes out. And I'm just so proud of you all. So thank you so much. Thank you much. so much for having us. Yeah. Thank you for holding space for us today, Ruth. Yeah. This is really incredible. We appreciate your time today. Thank you. Yes. 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 It was beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. I, it was lovely and it was priceless <laughs> to be here and hear you and yeah, feel you. And yes, I don't know. I'm just excited. I'm just excited. <laughs> So, so much love in this room. I want to say something, but I'm going to wait until after we finish recording.